we're going to get into our topic tonight, which is a powerful topic that Paul discusses and outlines for us in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the 18th to the 21st verse. And he talk, he tells us, he instructs us to be reconciled with God. Now, this is it's buried off in the fifth chapter. You're going to if you read real fast, you can run right through it, but it's one of the most important part of our Christian walk is to be reconciled with God. And that's what we're going to be teaching on tonight. Please do not hesitate, Facebook Live, Zoom Live, to stop me anywhere and ask questions because this is not intended to be a lecture. It's intended to be Bible study. So we want you to get this word so that it can ignite you and, and help to to clarify and, and God reveal what he's trying to say to us and our role in the kingdom, all right? Father God, we thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day. You have made it to be a great day, and we acknowledge you that it would not have been possible without you, and you have brought us to the end of this day and to this evening time where we have set aside many things, set aside distractions or things we can do later on to set and participate so that we can understand your word. You said through Paul that we should grow in grace and the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. And we're here tonight to, to, to uncover and to, to, we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us those things through, through your divine wisdom that will help us on this journey, help us to be better saints help us to walk in kingdom authority and to know so that our light will shine so men may see our good work and glorify you who art in heaven now as we enter to this this bible study anoint me afresh let me not say anything that's not being led by the spirit the spirit of truth we honor you we love you it's by the power and authority given to us by christ jesus we pray and we say amen and amen Amen. Amen. Good evening, Bishop. Good hey, evening, buddy. Latoya. I was looking for you. And Sister yeah, Hench, Sister Hench right there. I see her right here. Good to yeah. see both of you. All yeah. right. All right. We so we're gonna get started in uh this topic. It's it's very important. And as I was sharing before the prayer, it's kind of buried, it's not buried in the fifth chapter of Saint Second Corinthians. But if you just read, you know, one of those days when you sit down and read, you can almost read right past it because he says some profound things in, in, in a brief way, but we have to park the bus here tonight because it is part of our ministry. Part of our, everybody has this ministry that Paul said that God reconciled, uh, gave us reconciliation with him. And then once we have been reconciled, that we have a responsibility as being in the kingdom to share this reconciliation with others. Because sometimes people just think there's no hope for me. You say, why don't you come to church? Some people think there's no hope. Why come when there's no hope? And this scripture gives us inspiration to know, uh, as the song said, don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. Good to see you, Peggy Wilson. I see you on Facebook. All right, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Let's everyone turn to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to, I'm going to read the 18th through the 21st verse. All right, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the 18th through the 21st verse. All right, and listen to what the word of God says. He says, and all things are of God. Everything is of God. Because God created what? All things. He said, who has reconciled us? See, that's a powerful word. You need to put highlight this on your Bible. It said that God reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. That God used Jesus Christ as the method to reconcile us to him. And has given to us, watch this. So, God reconciled us to him. We're going to talk about what reconcile is, Elder Goldsberry. But when God reconciled us to him, then he gave unto us the ministry of reconciliation, right? He reconciled us. 
Then he turned around and flipped it and said, now you have the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, to wit, that God was in Christ, right? That, that, that solves a, a dilemma for a lot of people. God was in Christ, right? Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. In other words, God could impute our trespasses and we pay the penalty for sin. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But he said that God didn't do that. He imputed their trespasses unto them and, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So there's two things that Latoya, one, he says, there's the ministry of reconciliation. Then he says, there is the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are, watch this, because of our new relationship with God, my sin, now what he expects us to be is in verse 20. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors. And an ambassador is a person who in the United States have ambassadors There's over 180 plus countries that make up the world. And every country has an ambassador. And the ambassador's job is to locate itself in another country or countries and represent the sovereign leader of the company that, they, that they're a citizen of. And they have the authority to speak for the leader. For example, United States have ambassadors in every country. And every ambassador's job is to represent the president of the United States. If a war breaks out in a country, the one person they will never put in prison, lock up, and whole ransom is the ambassador because the ambassador is seen to be the president in that country because that person represents the country, speaks for the president on what the president tell him to say because the president can't be in every country, but he can send an ambassador. And 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 when the, when, when the ambassador speaks on behalf of the president, it's law. And if they abduct, and prison the ambassador, they have just declared war on the United States. And the United States will go to war with a country that has imprisoned an ambassador. Countries have, Iran captured over 200 people over uh, Jimmy Carter's term, kept them for almost a year and a half. But guess what? They had to let the ambassador go. He had to come right back to the United States because they negotiated the deal to release the hostages. But if that ambassador had been put in prison, they would have sent jets over there and destroyed some stuff to get him out. So we are the same way with God. We are his ambassadors, right? We are ambassadors for Christ. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We're not righteous, but because of our faith in God, God has made us the righteousness of him. The, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. And you say, wait a minute, how can we be righteous because we all sin, we all have sinned and fell, fallen short of the grace, glory of God? It's because of this reconciliation that we got to understand. And some people are nervous because they make mistakes and they, they get frustrated or get uh, fear comes upon them because they think they're going to miss heaven. Or they think that, oh, when I turn that corner, God's going to be waiting on me. And he's going to do some things to me that because I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Well, here's the good news. Because of Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ, God gave us reconciliation. All right. So the ministry of reconciliation refers to what we do as believers. 
God gave us an assignment. Once we are accepted Jesus Christ, Ron the Caldwell, and we receive the salvation of God, which is not the, the ticket to get to heaven, but we, he took the penalty of sin off us so that when we sin, then he does not penalize us because of what Christ did. So, so the, the reconciliation, the minute reconciliation in 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 refers to the work we do, right? And the message that we give. And here's the message. I want you to get the message. I know sometimes we try to testify, give testimonies. We try to witness to people and they make uh, sometime vain promises that they don't intend to keep. They just don't want to hurt our feelings or they want to be in a hurry and leave and us leave them alone. But here's the message. All this is from God. All this is from God. Everything is from God. And God has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ. What does the word reconcile mean? It means make an exchange for. So here's the good news. God made an exchange. What was the exchange? We should die when we sin. But God reconciled us. He made an exchange. And the exchange was he took all of our sins, past, present, and future, and he put them on Jesus. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. He did what? God reconciled us. The word reconcile, Michelle Turner, Deacon S.E. Lake, Michelle Turner, means to make an exchange. And what God did was he made an exchange. He took all of our sins and it put our sins on Jesus. Then he took the righteousness of Jesus and put it on us. Oh my goodness. That's the, I don't think that there's a swap that can be made on the planet that can compare to what God did for us. He took our sins, the whole world, and put exchanged it by putting it on Jesus. Then he took Jesus' righteousness because the Bible said that Jesus did not and could not sin, which means he was righteous. And then he took the righteousness, Cheryl Massey, and put God, Jesus' righteousness on us so that when God looks at us, he does not see the sin on us. He sees the righteousness of Christ on us. And I know that right there takes some, you got to ponder that for a while because you said, but well, that's not logical. Well, it's not based on logic, my brothers and sisters. It's based on faith. We have to, we have, to have the faith to believe that the reason why stuff that could have, should have, would have, ought to happen to us did not is because God made an exchange. He exchanged our sins for Jesus' righteousness. So, so the ministry of reconciliation is this, Jada Sanders, proclaiming the gospel, reassuring people that forgiveness of sin is available in Christ. That's it. That's it. And I think sometimes we fall short of properly witnessing to people because we're good at telling them what they should not do and what they should do and how they ought to get in the church and how they ought to read the Bible and how they ought to pray. And sometimes it looks like we're, we're talking in, 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 our, in our conversations on deaf ears is because they don't comprehend what we're saying. Because they still feel guilty. Yeah, when, you, when we sin, we, we feel guilty, right? Until we realize that we can repent and confess, right? Because of this reconciliation, right? And so the message is, the ministry, Paul talks about the ministry of recon reconciliation. He says, uh, verse number 18, let's read it again. We're in 2 Corinthians the fifth chapter and 18th verse, he says, and all things are of God who has reconciled us. He made an exchange to himself by Jesus, right? And has given to us, see, it's to us, the ministry of reconciliation. And the ministry of reconciliation involves proclaiming the gospel and the gospel is good news. What's the good news, Bishop? that 
we have the forgiveness of sin is available in Christ. Yeah, we God forgives us because of Christ, not because we had a shut in and prayed and fasted for three days and consecrated ourselves and all the stuff, uh, ceremonials and rituals that we do that we we believe that matters to God. It doesn't. God knows what it is. Sometimes we trying to uh, get an excuse from God by going through rituals and ceremonies. But watch this, Elder Goldsberry, that the reconciliation God gave us by putting the righteousness on us is that we have the forgiveness of sin. And it's available because our faith in Christ, that's it. Because sin does one thing, right? Sin prevents us from having a relationship with God. God cannot, God will not have a personal relationship with sin. He hates sin, right? Sin is, is, is a problem with God. But that's why this reconciliation is so important because Jesus was perfect. He was righteous. And the sacrifice on the cross paid an atonement for sin. And when that happened, it brought harmony. It brought humanity back to having a relationship with God. Uh -huh. See, it brought, it brought us back to God. Adam and God had a relationship. God would visit Adam at the, at the cool of the day. His voice would walk in the garden and because he wanted to have a relationship. God has always wanted to have a relationship. When, when the children of Israel was traveling uh, from, from Egypt to the promised land, while they were traveling to the, through the wilderness, journeying for 40 years, God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle. Why? Because God said he wanted to dwell in the tabernacle because he wanted to have a relationship with his people. And then when they built the temple, God said he's going to be in the temple. He said every prayer heard in that temple, every prayer ushered in the temple or in the church, he will hear because God's ultimate goal is to have a relationship with us. But sin, sin itself, keeps us from having a relationship with God. No matter what the sin is, you know, there you do know there's no little sin, no big sin. Everything is sin for all unrighteousness is sin to God. Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 11, 2 and 17. I want you to get this. I want you to get this tonight. Somebody going to sleep better tonight because somebody made a misstep, said something they shouldn't have said stepped outside of their character. Now they're waiting for the retribution, right? Wondering what God going to do. Well, we're going to tell you what God going to do because of the spirit of reconciliation. The moment you repent and seriously repent, 1 John, uh, 1 John uh, 1 and 9 and 10, which we're going to get to in a minute, tells you what God going to do. But sin prevents us from having a relationship with God. Hebrews 2 and 17. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. That's why Jesus had to be a man, right? Because he was the man that sinned. So since man sinned, the exchange was for a man that didn't sin, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining, pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, right? So, 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 so God, right? Made God, he said God was in Christ. So God became man, right? So that he could himself die for a man. God who is righteous died for an unrighteous humanity so that the unrighteous humanity would be righteous with God. So that when man sinned, God don't, didn't treat him like unrighteous. God treats us like righteousness. So Jesus reconciled us to God. He made an exchange for us. He exchanged himself for us. I, I, we were teaching that, and New Hope understands this. We, Paul said he died for us. 
but there was a scripture and people say, you know, he died for us, but all through the New Testament, all through Paul's letters, he, he goes beyond that. He said, he is our substitute. That means he didn't die for us. He died in our place. And that ought to make it shout. Because sometimes we don't get excited because we say, well, you know, Jesus died for my sin. No, he died in our place. So that when God sees sin, he sends his wrath against sin because he hates sin. But because of the exchange, listen to this, by, he exchanged us for Christ, put the burden on Christ, and put Christ's righteousness on us. And that's what it represents. We can repent of our sins and be right with God again. Marlene Diggins Lake uh, that that that's that's so awesome to know. That that when we sin, God got a problem. But because we are in Christ, God don't see the problem. God sees the righteousness of Christ that's upon us, that he imputed to us. He gave Tina Diaz. He made us righteous. We're nowhere close to being righteous. As a matter of fact, in the Old Testament, the scripture Isaiah says that we'll filthy rags. You know what you do? You know what you do with a filthy rag? I don't even, I've had stuff that I was working on. The rag got so filthy. I didn't even dare to want to wash it. What I did was I just threw it away. So God could have thrown us away because we ain't nothing but a filthy rag. Now, some people try to clean a filthy rag. And after you clean it, it still look nasty because you can't get all the filth off it, all the grease and grime. You say, man, we're not going to put this in the washer and dryer, washer and mess up the washer. What we're just going to do is just throw the rag away. And God could have thrown us away, Deacon uh, Elect, soon to be Deacon Jerome Woodford. But he didn't, right? He 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 made us righteous. So when we repent of our sins, we become right with God again through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's go to Romans 5 and 10 and look at that right quick. And please stop me if you have questions. See Denny Cash here tonight. Amen. Digging his Kathy Woods. Amen. Jerry Patton. There my, there my peoples are. All right. Romans 5 and 10. Romans 5 and 10. Watch this. It is for if when we were enemies. Now this, this is something else. Before we were in Christ, God saw us as an enemy. Hey, you don't want to be an enemy of God. You, you, nobody wants to be an enemy of God. And that's why God treated the, the the children of Israel and, and other nations with such hostility because when God saw them, he saw them as opposing him. Anybody that ain't for you got to be against you. Well, I'm not against them. Well, if you're not for them, you are. And so God said, you're not for him. So that means you are against him. Let's look at verse 10 again. For if when we were enemies, when we were enemies, before we got saved, this is called Adam Miller. Before we got saved, we were God's enemies. But, but he says, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being rec reconciled, we should be saved by his life. So here, here we go. Let's put an extension. It's not just Jesus Christ died for our sins. It's the life that Jesus Christ lived, right? He lived a righteous life because he did not sin, all right? So we need reconciliation with God because our relationship with him was broken. We were, before we became what we call saved, right, Deacon Miller, we didn't understand that we had no relationship with God, that the only reason why God didn't do to us what he could have done is because of mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is the love of God. God so loved the world, right? He, he loves what he created. Most people, if they got, you know, a good heart and good sense, if you create something, you love what you created. So God created a world that became corrupt 
but because the world became corrupt, didn't stop God from loving us. That's why he became he he was in Christ. But as we said a couple of weeks ago, he created the world. Then he turned around and died for the world he created. Who would do that other than someone who was in love with what their creation was? So sin made us God's enemies. But Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross. God was looking for justice. And Jesus Christ satisfied God's just, justice. Because Jesus' death made it possible for us to have peace with God. All right? Go back to 2 Corinthians 5 and 19. We read it, but I want to I want to connect those dots together. 5 and 19. Right? Said so said, Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross, satisfying God's justice. Jesus' death made it possible for us to have peace with God. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing, right? Not judging us based on our trespasses, right? Unto them and has committed unto us this exchange that I've been talking about. So 2 Corinthians 5, 19 is really saying that God reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against him. That's what, that's what, Ella Goldsboro, that's what uh, chapter five, 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 is saying is, God don't count our sins against us. Now I know people say, oh my God, people are out doing stuff. Everybody's out doing stuff. Some people do things publicly. Some people do it in their mind. Some people do it privately, but sin is sin, right? But, but what God did was he done, because of this reconciliation, now we're not talking about premeditated, willful, I'm going to just go out here and do this and hurt people. Now that's, that's wickedness. We're not talking about that. We're talking, we're talking to the saints of God who are trying to press towards the mark, who are trying to live a, a, a Christ-like life. That's who we're talking about. He, he don't look at the sins. I know some people think they don't sin, but that's contrary to the Bible because First John said, if a man says he has no sin, he has not sinned, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. And the reason why we still blessed and highly favored and things, even though we have the devil and frenemies and enemies, our life for the most part is pretty good is because of this reconciliation because God don't count our sins against us. And we talked last week about that when we get to when we get to heaven, when we get to the judgment seat of God, He's not even looking at sin. How can He look at our sins when He reconciled us to Himself, right? And He's not counting our sins against us. So now, watch this. We because of this this reconciliation, this exchange, we are God's friends. We're God's friends. God don't see us as enemies. He sees us as friends. Let's, let's turn to St. John 15 and 5. Y'all ain't stopping me, so I guess y'all all getting it. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll email you the quiz at the end of Bible study, and you can self-test yourself. St. John, the 15th chapter, 15th verse, all right? See, see when you, when you really get this point about the reconciliation and really realize what God did in Christ with this exchange. Then you move from, you know, I just want to be a servant of the, I just want to, I just want to, Lord, use me as a servant. That That's what we say, because we're thinking with a carnal mind. But when we understand and digest Elder Goldsberry, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, this 18th to the first verse and realize we reconcile, we'll reconcile with, with God. God don't see us enemies. St. John 15 and 15 then explains to us how Jesus feel about us. Here we go. John 15 and 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Wait a minute. Mm. He says from now on, because of this, this exchange that's going to take place. You're no longer servants. God don't want us serving him. God just wants us to, 
He wants us to be vessels that he can work through. And we're running around trying to, trying to serve God like a servant. You know what a servant is? A servant is the, the king, the master of the house sat at the table and the servant run around and put all the food on the table, make sure the, the teas are, the tea and the tea glass never get less than full and make sure the food is warm and make sure everything is perfectly get cooked. He said, no, you're no longer a servant. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. Molly Lassen, if we are servant, we so busy serving, we don't know what the Lord is doing. He said, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. That's good news because we're no longer enemies of God. God don't have hostility. God still hates sin, but God don't hate us. Before we were saved, God hated sin. And since we were doing sin, we were in the pathway of God's hostility. But now we have been reconciled in Christ. He says, you're no longer a servant. I know the song says, serving the Lord would pay off. That, I grew up hearing that song, right? Uh, that, it was a whole lot of songs that sound good because people in that that era was struggling. They didn't have what we had. They didn't have these new cars and refrigerators stashed with food and so much food you forgot what food you bought. You're still buying groceries every week and can't, can't even get the food in the refrigerator. And so after so many months, you just call your, 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 your kinfolk and say, y'all come over and get some of this food. I got too much food in this freezer. I got to get rid of some of it before it go bad, right? Yeah, I got so much food. Guess what? Mm -mm -mm. that God sees us as friends. So that's why he, he tells us, he reveals to us things that he wants us to know. And so we are one now in Christ. And those who have been justified through faith and repent by Jesus, we say his blood, but Paul uses the word blood, uh, blood, my seal, to represent death, right? Because of Jesus' death, we no longer have our sins counted against us. And now people will always judge us, but that's people. And people are going to always talk and people are always going to have what they think is right and wrong. And if you uh, try to meet the standard of individuals who think they have the mind of God and know what God is thinking, which even though the Bible said nobody know what God is thinking and nobody can comprehend the thoughts of God because God's thoughts are as high as the heaven above the earth. They will always tell you what, what they believe is wrong, right? But here's the good news tonight is that we're one in Christ and we have been justified by Jesus' death and no longer have our sins been counted against us. If you repent and confess, we are reconciled with God. This reconciliation does not mean we don't break the law of God. Jerry Patton, but our confession and repentance, right? Make God see us not as an enemy, but as a friend. In other words, God sees us as righteous. Let's turn to 1 John, 1 John, the uh, first chapter. And this, this, this is quoted on occasions, but sometimes we, we quote things and we, we, we miss it. First John, first John is right after Peter, right before Revelations, right? First John, here we go. Everybody got it? Got it, run the call well. He says, if we confess our sins, Christine, this is good. You got to confess the sin. We got to confess the sin. Don't walk around like, well, don't nobody know but me. Well, first of all, when we sin, there's always somebody else around, right? So he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is faithful. That means he will always do what he says. And he's just. He won't do no, nothing that he didn't say. If he didn't say it, he can't. He don't change the rules, right? Yeah, the government can change the rules. They can say, well, on this street, we want... Uh, you can, you can drive 45 miles an hour. We won't give you a ticket. So you get accustomed for 10 years 
of driving 45 miles an hour through that little street area. And then one day, uh, the council get together, the city officials get together, so that's too fast. We're going to drop the speed limit to 30. And here you come zooming down through there because you didn't realize that the law has changed. You're driving 45, and, and the, the, man, the men in blue pull you over with the blue light, giving you a ticket. He said, wait a minute. This street has been 45 miles an hour. I said, well, ma'am, sir, I'm sorry. We changed the law on that. And you said, but then nobody sent me no email, put no mail, <laughs> put no letter in the mail. Then nobody put it on the news. So, said, ma'am, that ain't, that ain't our concern. What he said is that men will change rules because men can be unjust, right? Un men become unjust to benefit themselves, Patricia Miller. But God is just, which means if he said it's, this, it's going to be this way, it will always be this way. Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, and forever. All right. He says he's just to forgive us our sins. But here we go, Ella Goldsberry, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? Because we have confessed, right? He, we are now reconciled with him. And he sees us now as righteous because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We may feel guilty because that's just the way we are. You know, we are, I mean, it's just like, you know, sometimes you see a little child and the child is, uh, did something wrong and the mama walk in the room before the mama even say something, the baby start crying. Yeah, we all know that. We all know that story. Say, why are you crying? Because man, I don't know because I'm scared. Scared of what? I'm scared I'm going to get a whipping. Mama didn't bring no belt. Daddy didn't come in there with no switch. But just the thought that I did something wrong means there's got to be a consequence that baby start crying and the parent has to say, dry them tears up from your eyes. Just don't do that again. And that's what God does for us. All right? I hope y'all are still with me. Y'all still tracking with me. All right? So, so, God, through because of Christ making that exchange, when we confess, God sees us as righteous. He cleanses. Cleanse means he don't see sin. He can't see the sin, right? He cleanses us, all right? So the ministry of reconciliation is a big responsibility because God is making this appeal through us. Wait a minute. God ain't, you mean God is talking through more than the preacher? Yes. He's making his appeal through us. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians. And we're going to look at the fifth chapter again, but we're going to go down to the to the uh, 20th verse. All right. 2 Corinthians, fifth chapter, 20th verse. All right. Watch this. The, the word of Corinthians, reconciliation I just gave you. The exchange took place. Jesus took our sins. We took his righteousness. But then guess what? The moment that exchange took place, we became the ministry of reconciliation. The responsibility to make the appeal to the world is through us. Let's look at verse number 20. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter and the 20th verse. Watch this. Karen Wilford, I begin to see let Karen Wilford, I know you're sitting there with your wonderful husband. Look at verse number 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. God is asking us to spread this word. Let me tell you, you know what word we spread? You're going to die and go to hell. That's the word we spread. That we spread the word of judgment. God said, no, you are now his ambassador. What you say is, if you accept Jesus Christ by faith, God will reconcile you to himself, which is God will re re remove your sins. He, he removed your sin and put them on Christ so that now when he sees you, you are righteous to him. But I'm still, I'm, I'm not there yet. Well, first of all, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to raise my hand and say I'm there yet because it's a lifelong journey. And there's some things that you're going to die with because we're dying daily. It's a it's a daily thing. It's a 
It's a making five step forward and making one step back, making 10 step forward, making two step back. But here's the good news. You still what? Moving forward. And the reason why we move forward and we have blessed lives is because of this fact that God made that exchange. But now that God has done it, he want us to go tell people. We are his ambassadors. You're not a preacher. God didn't give you a sermon. God didn't give you a word to preach to the people. But what God gave you was a word of reconciliation. Verse number 19. He said, verse number 19, at the, the latter clause said, has committed unto us the what? The word of reconciliation. Our responsibility is to tell people, if you accept Jesus Christ by faith, not by logic, you know, not by intellect, not by trying to figure out how God did all this and how does it all work, because faith means I don't understand it, but I believe the God who said it. And when we get to that point, God said, now you're no longer enemy of mine because of Christ, because now I see you like I see Christ. And then God, then he, he imputes that righteousness on us and he expects us now to go share it with other people starting first with our family, right? You start with your family. It, it's, it's an embarrassing thing to be out in the neighborhood sharing the ministry of reconciliation with everybody that you know around the church. And then you got kinfolk everywhere and you talk to them on the phone, uh, go to the cookout, even go traveling and shopping and all the things we do with our family and never take the moment to tell them about this reconciliation that God wants with all people. He wants to be reconciled. He wants to make that a change. He wants to take their sins away and put them on Christ as Christ did and then give us what uh, forgiveness through righteousness, all right? So we gotta share, we gotta share this good news. God loves us. Yes, he does. But I'm going to tell you what's better than that. God forgives you of all your sins. And God gives you time to get it right. And the reason why God gives us time because he, he don't see your sins. Because we already said he hates your sin. But he sees the righteousness of Christ. That's why we celebrate. That's why when we hear his name, we, we, we put our voices in the air. And some people clap their hands. Some people get joys in it. And some people have tears in the eyes, Elder Goldsberry, because we realized that Christ did for me what nobody would ever do. No, no love has no man than this. Greater love has no man than this than to die for his friends. That's what the Bible said. I don't know. I know, I know some people say, well, you know, you know, I, you know, I love you. I love you until death. But they ain't, that don't mean they're willing to die. God said, uh, OK, we got a choice tonight. I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take Jim or Bob. Bob don't told Jim. Look, I'm willing. To, I'm, I'm gonna go. You what? I'll even die for you. Well, Bob, you ready? Ready for what? You ready to die for Jim? Oh no! Whoa! Wait a minute! Hold up! Wait! Hold up! God, let me go pray. <laughs> let me go pray about this. Man. Yeah, everybody want to go to heaven, but not tonight, right? We all want to go, but not tonight, sister. Ann. See, so so the good news is we have to go share with people that God has given us this forgiveness. Yes. It's, but instead of taking them this word of rebuke and judgment that pushes them out into the world, because if I'm going to hell, I might as well enjoy myself. If I'm going to end up in hell anyway, right, uh -huh. then why don't I just stay on out here and have as much fun as I want? But if you say, wait a minute, God has fixed it where you can get your life right. What, how's that? How do I do that? You have to believe in Christ. You have to you have to accept him as God. And you have to put your cares upon him. You have to uh be begin become accountable to reading his word and understanding him. And, and that's why church is so important. And then and then tell him that God sees you as righteous, that what you're going through is not because of God, it's because of choice. And when we do that, then Paul said we are in the ministry of reconciliation. So we got to share this this message, Elder Goldsberry. We got to share the message to people. Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 1. Let's see what Paul is saying in Ephesians 4 and 1. We got to share this message. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. All right? 
He says, watch this. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Prisoner mean I had no choice about what I'm doing. God didn't ask me, do you want to do this? God said, this is what I want you to do. And you ain't got no choice in the matter. He said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Well, what is that vocation for the for the for the for the saint of God, the Christian? Go back to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter in the 21st. Here I'm gonna tell you what the vocation is. 2 Corinthians Jasmine, the fifth chapter said, We are ambassadors for Christ. We are the representatives for Christ. We represent Christ. Yes. And Jesus didn't beat up nobody. Jesus was in a situation where they caught a woman in the very act of adultery. That means she was having intercourse with a man. They caught her and brought the woman without the man that Jesus said, what does Moses' law say? Moses' law says, we ought to stone her. What do you say, Jesus? The Bible said Jesus wrote in the sand. And then he said, him, he's that without a sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Guess what? They all walked away. That ain't the most powerful part of the scripture. This is the most powerful part of scripture. He said, woman, where are thou accusers? She said, I don't see nobody. You know what he said? Just go and sin no more. He didn't even say, you know you was wrong. We would have would have spent at least three hours, right? Three hours talking about, you know, you wouldn't, don't, you got a husband, you got that cheating and got a good man paying the bill. We would have went all down the road. Jesus said, listen, go and stop sinning. That's it. Immediately he forgave her. Immediately he forgave her. Immediately. He, Jackie Boo, immediately he forgave her. That's, the, that's what we are, at, are at, as ambassadors, right? We got to give people hope. The way, the way you get somebody drawn to you is to love them. You don't get nobody drawn to you. I mean, I'm, I'm saying all this for your own good. Well, that is not going to draw me, but you can love me into a place. That's what God did. God so loved the world and God still love us. Can, can, I, can I be a witness and say, we all know that we got some stuff, blessings that we didn't deserve to get. Yeah, some of us don't got to the age where now, yeah, we we close to God. We got nothing else we can do, right? <laughs> we, we, we got to get in the bed early. We can't step no three o'clock in the morning. We got to get in bed by at least nine o'clock because we tired, right? Especially we've been at church all day. See, so, 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 but when you're young, when you get old, Jackie Boo, I'm so yes. glad to see Jackie Boo. We forget that we was young. We forget that we was young. And we... They're doing the same thing. They're just doing it in a different way. Different way. Yeah. So the way the way we the way we win souls is by being ambassadors for Christ and giving them this ministry, this word of reconciliation that Christ died for your sins, and because He died for your sins, God exchanged His righteousness and gave us His righteousness. And gave gave him our sins. Ain't that ain't that powerful, Jacob? Yeah, that's very powerful. Yeah, he he took every sin that you would and I would ever commit and put it on Jesus, and then turned around and took the righteousness of a man who did not sin at all and put it on us. So when he sees us, he sees us as friends. All right. So we got to share that message. Every believer plays a part in the ministry of reconciliation. Paul said one person plants and one person waters. And I had to learn a long time, sometimes you can't be the planter and the waterer. Sometimes your role is just to put the seed into somebody and they accept the seed, but they're not going to accept your water. And then two years later, somebody walk past them, talk to them for five minutes and they give their life to Christ. You got to know as an ambassador, your role may just be the water. Latoya, somebody else planted the seed. And sometimes because we get ourselves you know, lifted up because somebody gave themselves, I, I, I witnessed to them. I just, I spent time where well, you did, but probably, most likely somebody else put the seed in them. And the seed could have been when they were growing up in church as a child, right? And that seed is in them. And you came along and what? Poured the water on them. One person waters, one person plant. Some people have the calling to water and plant, right? 
but at least you ought to be able to, to do one or the other. Some people know how to put the word in people. Some people know how to explain the word. Some people, Jack and Boo, know how to quote scriptures. But if you ask them what the scripture means, they can't explain it. But guess what? If you gave them a scripture, you put a seed in them. And then guess what? Put them on Zoom at Bible study and we can what? Water them. And all of a sudden they say, oh my goodness, I didn't, I didn't know. I know that Jesus died for me, but didn't nobody tell me that he put my sins on Jesus and put Jesus' goodness on me. Mm. What? Yeah, he put his righteousness on me. Well, how did, I, how, did I, how did all that happen? By faith in him, that God said it would happen that way. Tina Diaz, if God said that's the way he's going to do it, who am I to question God? Who am I to question how God operates? I can't do it, right? I just got to believe that if he said it in, the, in this book, you got to believe the whole book, not part of it. You can't pick and choose chapters and, and books that I don't I don't read in Isaiah because I don't understand it. Well, it's still in the book. And with the word in the book still applies, whether you understand it or not. Somebody may need to, you may need to go somewhere and be watered, right? Or you need maybe need to go somewhere and somebody need to plant that word in you. So, so as we proclaim the gospel, we act as peacemakers and God blesses. The peacemakers. Jacobo, we're supposed to be peacemakers. Peacemakers, yes. Yeah. And I don't care what confusion is going on in the room. If you are an ambassador for Christ, when you walk up in the room, guess what? Peace comes with you. Because you don't get caught up in the drama, right? You don't get caught up in the arguments and the debates. Because you, what you're going to bring forth is not, well, the way I feel, the way I think. You're going to bring in the word of God, which is a two-edged sword, which able to look beyond the marrow and the bone and discern the heart of the person. And the word of God will make them see themselves. You ain't got to be sitting, telling somebody, get your life right. Just say what the Bible says. And guess what? The word of God will do the rest. We are to bring, be peacemakers. Let's turn to St. Matthew 5 and 9. Because he said those peacemakers are blessed ambassadors to bring peace. The gospel of Jesus is good news. Denny Cash, it's good news. And I know we get upset. I know we get frustrated. We get, we get, we get stressed out. We get just overwhelmed and we just say stuff and then we said it and we don't really realize we said it and now we feel guilty about saying it. But the reality is our mind has to mature to the place where we are Peacemakers, St. Matthew's 5 and 9. Let's look at it. St. Matthew's 5 and 9. Here's what he says. Blessed, blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called what? The children of God. If we're not peacemakers, watch this, digging his hazel out. Good to see you on Facebook tonight. If we're not peacemakers, we cannot be what? Children of God. Because he said, blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be what? Called the children of God. So our job as being reconciled with God and God now has peace with us, we are his ambassadors. We now have to bring peace into situations. And by, that's the good news of the gospel. That's the good news that Christ preached he preached the good news. People said, well, he ridiculed people. Yeah, the Pharisees. Nowhere you'll find in scripture where Jesus ridiculed and rebuked nobody other than the people that were trying to attack him. <laughs> the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In other words, the religious folk who thought they had it going on. Jesus rebuked them. He called them hypocrites. He called them all kind of names. Called them snakes, right? Which is pretty serious back in the day where you were a Jew. But see, to the to the lay person, to the person who who didn't know God, he brought peace to them. All right. So we so we we got to live out this message of reconciliation. Lives are changed, and guess what? When lives are changed, Jackie Boo, guess what? God gets the glory. Gets the glory. Sometimes we get busy in ministry. I just want I just want to work in the ministry because I want God to get the glory out of my, out of my life. Uh, no, that's that's that that that's not. We need helps ministry. We need people 
to work in the ministry. That that's necessary because we those hands and and minds and feet are necessary to carry out the operations of the church. But our first priority while working in the ministry is to be ambassadors. And ambassadors are representatives of the God they love. And guess what? And become peacemakers to the people that don't know Christ. Because the same God that loved us is the same God that loves them. Yeah. God loved us in our sin, right? And didn't kill us when he could have. Or didn't, didn't let us go through some stuff that some of our friends went through. You know, we, we, we lived long enough to see that some of our friends they, 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 we were doing what they were doing. We took a left turn though. They kept on going. They kept going though. And we run into them 20 years later and we don't, they don't even look the same. You know why? Because they never got that message. They never got, no one ever gave them this word. God loves you. What? God loves you. God, God, if you accept Christ, this is what's going to happen. Christ died for you. He died in your place. He died in your place. And if you accept the fact that God said since he died in your place and he was a righteous man, God going to make you righteous. What that mean, preacher? That means that God sees you when you're trying to do right and you still fall short. God is not going to see. He's not going to be hostile towards you. He's going to love you through it. He's going to love you through it. He's going to love you through it. And that's the problem we have seeing some people look like in our mind, like, oh yeah, something's getting ready to happen to them. Instead of something happening to them, Jack and Boo, guess what? They go up to another level. He said, wait a minute, how could that be? How could it be? You know why? Because their action does not reflect their heart. Their heart, they're getting their heart right with God, but the flesh still want to do something else. But God don't look at the appearance. God looks at what? The heart. The heart. Are you trying to press? Are you trying to come closer? Are you trying to, to pray? Are you trying to study? Are you trying to go to Bible study? Are you trying to go to church? Hello, somebody. But see, we think when well, you missing church, well, but at least you give me, give me some, be a peacemaker and say, you know, I thank God you're here today. Instead of telling me you missed three Sundays, where you been? Where you been? You should have been in church. Are you probably out partying all night? You up. There we go. That is not a peacemaker. That is not an ambassador. Jesus didn't do it. So guess what? Why should we? Why would we do it? Y'all got any questions, y'all? You, 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 that, that's why we're on the line tonight, because the, 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 the ministry of reconciliation, somebody introduced us to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, somebody. And it doesn't matter how you got introduced, whether it was in the back seat of a car, riding down the road, whether somebody invited to the church, or somebody, you were sitting up in the club and somebody said, hey, come to my church Sunday. And you just, because you want to befriend them, you went to church and guess what? Got a, got caught up with Jesus. It doesn't matter. Somebody was an ambassador in our lives. And what this lesson is about is that consequently, we should be what? An ambassador spreading that same gospel to somebody else. I have a question. Yes. Okay. You know, I know God is <coughs> our home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, even though we don't do all we're supposed to do, I heard this minister say that that when you're a, when you're a Christian, when you're, when you're saved, you accept, you know, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to know before you die that you're going to heaven. Where some people teach that you, you won't know until you get on the other side. Okay, well, that's a good, that's a that's the question women respond to. I know. Mm -hmm. So here, here's what the thing. But you see, that's that's the whole point of the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you are a part of this reconciliation, that you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, God raised mm -hmm. from the dead. And here's what God, here's what this lesson is all about tonight. That God then took our sins, and put them on Jesus, okay? Then he took Jesus' righteousness and what? Put it on us. You see? 
That, that's why we sin all the time. Sometimes we sin and don't even know it because we ain't read the whole Bible. We don't realize that uh, him that know to do right and don't do it is a sin. Well, guess what? Sometimes we should have spoke up and didn't say nothing. You know what God said? That's a sin. But we don't see it as a sin. We call that, well, I'm just trying to keep the peace, right? But see, so therefore, what we consider sin are those things that are, I would like drinking and all this crazy stuff. But there's, mm -hmm. but anything that's not lined up with God is sin to God. But because of reconciliation, God took those uh, those sins off of us and put them on Christ, and then took Christ's righteousness and put them on us. So when we go to heaven, we're not getting judged for sin. That would make no sense. Then why would Jesus die? When we go to heaven, we're getting judged on what did you do? Were you an ambassador? Were you out there witnessing the people? Were you telling people about God's love? Were you a peacemaker? All them eight beautiful uh, beatitudes, the attitudes. Which, did you do them eight beatitudes? Did, you, did, did Are you bearing the fruit, them, them Galatians 5 and 20? If the answer to all of that is no, you're still in heaven, but you ain't going to get no reward or your reward is going to be few, you see? So preachers who believe in fire and brimstone trying to scare people into heaven, it don't it don't never work. If they, when we were young, they said, don't 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 go out and stay out past 12, something may happen. Well, ain't nothing gonna happen to me. <laughs> right? That, 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 that didn't scare us. No, it didn't. Matter of fact, since you told me to be in at 12 o'clock, I'm gonna push the envelope anyway. I'm sure I'm gonna show up at one and see whether you really gonna lock me out on the front porch. You see, it creates rebellion. Uh -huh. But when you explain to me, see, it's about exp being ambassador means taking the time to explain to people, not rebuking and reprimanding and disciplining people and telling them about how, this, how they messing up. Then what happens is then they hear me, they hear us, right? And then they hear us, they hear the voice of God because we put in the word of God, right? Because the truth of the matter is, and it's right there, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21, we will reconcile with God because God made that exchange. So now he considers us the righteous of God. Let's 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 look at 2 Chronicles. I read it, but I want to, I want to, that your question is right on time. Cause I'm glad you asked it. Because sometimes we we leave the Bible study and be still con confused, right? Watch this. 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter. Oh, 2nd chapter. I want everybody, because I only asked the right question to close this Bible study out. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, and the 21st verse. I hope y'all all got it. Here's what he says. For he has made him to be sin for us. That means God took our sins and put them on who? On Jesus. Uh -huh. Who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know nothing about sin. Jesus didn't sin at all. He was tempted, but he didn't sin. Watch this. That we might be made what? The righteousness of God. So that means when God see us, even when we sin, because he took the sin and put them on Jesus. So he can't see the sin on us. He sees the sin on Jesus. He sees the righteousness on us. As long as we are growing in grace and the knowledge. It don't give us a, a, a green light to go out and just do what we want to do and puff, you know, puff, puff crack and drink and cut up and rev around. No, we're talking about the Christian folk here who are really trying to line up with God's word, right? He sees us as righteous. So when we get to heaven, there ain't no judgment about sin because he took us. What did it say? He took the sin. He did what? He took the sin. He has, he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew what? No sin. That we might be what? The righteousness of God. Yeah. Did that make sense? So when we get to heaven, it ain't about sin. It's about what? What did you do? It's about reward. What did you do? Did you really, were you really an ambassador or was you really just trying to make yourself look good? Because some people want to be high profile and they love hearing their name called. You can see the grin on their face. It's like a prideful thing. Like, oh, so like, Ooh, you just did a great job. And if you don't say to them they did a great job, you see another look on their face, which is, I can't believe they didn't recognize me. But the real Christian, the real ambassador, ain't looking for praise from man. They're looking for praise from who? God. Because only what God do will last. People, people will praise you on a Monday, but don't let them hear something bad about you on Friday. On Saturday, Sunday, they ain't going to sit next to you because they heard something. Whether it's true or not, they don't know. 
It's just the idea they can't believe you did that, whether it's true or not, you see? That's what this is all about. I like how you said that. Yeah. And if people, if people are in it for like self gain or to be praised, yeah. then you need to just, just step away and then take some time to reevaluate yourself because <coughs> God tells us whatever we do, do as unto the Lord. That's You're right. You're supposed to do it as unto the Lord, not to be seen, not for a show. It's as unto the Lord. And if you're really committed, you will stay in it to win it for God and not for other people. Because Absolutely. it's not about other people. It is about you and God, Absolutely. your relationship with God, your soul salvation. When yeah. I see God at the gate, I'm not going to see nobody I see on this Bible study. I'm going to see God. I'm going to meet God face to face. And he's going to mm -hmm. ask me the question. He's mm -hmm. going to look at me at what I'm doing. So well, well, I better make sure that I'm in the Christian race for, for God and not for self gain. Well, here's the thing. that Everything you said was good. But watch this. If you if a person is doing it for self gain, they won't even see God. See the only people going to see God are those who are, have the righteousness of God on them. If I'm not really into God, it's all about me. I'm not trying to glorify God. That means what they need. To, I like what you said, step aside for a moment. When I say get saved, they realize they need to get saved. Mm -hmm. See, they have not accepted Jesus Christ. They have not They have not come to the understanding that it ain't, it ain't never about us. If it was about us, we would live forever on the planet, right? But since right. we can only live a a limited amount of years, and we don't know when we're going to die, it ain't never about us. Because the moment we die, guess what? Somebody's in the lineup in the locker room ready to what? Come out and take our place. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I was at a church, a young pastor, and people said, we don't know what's going to happen after Deacon so-and-so and Deacon so-and-so die. Guess what happened? Deacon so-and-so and so-and-so died. I was the pastor of that church. Church blew up. So guess what? In numbers. So guess what? Whoever was thinking that the church was being held together by two people would made a, ba a major error. It ain't never based on a person. There is nobody on the planet so important that God will keep you here. Nobody. But some, because we are fleshy people that have not yet come into true understanding who God is, you know, we allow flesh to be, you know, flesh love to feel good and love to be praised and honored. Ain't nothing wrong with that because the Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. But we should not revel in, in, and just overjoy ourselves about it because it's not about us. We are ambassadors for Christ. Our role after being saved is to spread that word. That's what he just, I just spent the last hour and right. 11 minutes is to spread the word. Good news, be a peacemaker, spread it to people so that God's kingdom can expand. And as God's kingdom expand, guess what? The devil kingdom, what? Decreases. That's the way it works. If the earth has so much, you know, so many people, there's 8.3 million people. So the more people get on God's side means that the devil has what? Less people. And who does God use to do that? Us. Us. Not the preacher, preacher in the pulpit, but the members of what? Us. In the street, in the food line, in the post office, in the community, in the neighborhood, working in the hospital, working in whatever. So that that's that's what this soul Bible study was about. And and to on Ola's question, then you don't have to worry about going to heaven to be judged about sin. Jesus took care of that. You're going to heaven, it's God gonna say, Were you an ambassador? He's not gonna ask the question because it's already written down. He just renders judgment, which is you get a crown, you get three crowns, you get five crowns, you get this in heaven. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. did, did that make sense? Bishop, yeah. and the, uh, going back to uh, like some pe some ministers, like uh, on that same concept, some ministers are saying all you got to do is just accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and believe he whatever, whatever, then you will <coughs> to heaven bound. That's not true. That's what I'm saying. They were, you know, it's yeah. almost like that's all you have to do is just ex just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believe that and his son, his father raised him from the dead, then you are saved. Whether you do anything or not. Yeah, well, you know. There's ministers, there's people, there's people of all, it's, it's a lot of people said, it's people that believe it, pastors, but some people, guess what, here's, here's the thing, since I can't be everywhere and God didn't give me that assignment, God didn't give me an assignment to be looking for those people, God gave me an assignment to teach the people who want to hear, 
And, I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you, it ain't, it, there's no such thing in the Bible as a sinner, sinner's prayer that some man made up. And there's mm -hmm. no such thing as just 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 accept Jesus and you're done. It's, otherwise, Paul wouldn't say grow in grace and in the mm -hmm. knowledge. It takes yeah. knowledge. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. You can't love somebody you don't know. We say it all the time. We meet somebody. You know, I just love you. Yo, you love what you see. You ain't seen the real me yet. Hang out with me for all day. You may see. You know what? I can't stand it. I, I, two minutes at church, boy. I just think they're pleasant. But I was with them all day. They almost drove me crazy. Right? So we get a glimpse of people. Oh, I just love them. No, you don't. You love what you see. True love is when you see the bad part of me and still say, you know, I love you anyway. love me. Yeah, you love me. Even on my bad days, you love me on the days when I took 10 steps forward, but took three steps back. Guess what? Mm -hmm. It don't change your heart. See, so what we have That's to do, like it, well, it's more than a marriage. It's better than yeah, a marriage. Yeah, more than a marriage. Yeah, it's better than a marriage because, see, this right here, this kind of love is unconditional. Marriage is conditional, but 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 this kind of love is unconditional, which means I don't want nothing from you. Now, let's be honest. You, if you got a spouse, a partner, you gonna want something from it. You say, "Now I can't be giving to you all this and paying all these bills, and you laying around ain't done." Now we're not having all that, right? Mm -hmm. But but mm -hmm. see, when, with our with our brethren, the body of Christ, it's unconditional because mm -hmm. I'm I'm not asking you to for anything. That's unconditional. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not expecting anything in return from you because I know what my reward is on this planet. God gonna give me benefits. And then mm -hmm. on the day of yeah. judgment, God going to give me reward. So I get it both. I get it coming and going. Amen. So, you know, we, 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 we got a lot of people. We got a lot of different faith. We got a lot of di different denominations. We got a lot of, it's over 223 different denominations in the United States by itself. And everybody got their own version. And that's, that's them. I ain't got mm -hmm. nothing to do with them and really don't spend a lot of time talking about them. I just know what the Bible said. And if you contradict the Bible, you're not an enemy of mine, but you won't give me no discussion because it's not it's not worthwhile, productive. Because all it's going to lead to is an argument, right? Okay. Yeah. So what we do is we know that we are we are reconciled with God. God took our sins and put them on Jesus, took Jesus' righteousness and put them on us. That means when we get to heaven, the ju the judgment seat of God is not sin because God Jesus took it, right? Because God came okay. take. Taking and giving to Jesus, then hold me accountable. Then he going but then he's gonna say, But did, what did you do with your salvation? That's the That's work. Right. And and uh -huh. then that don't mean you don't go to heaven, it means you don't get your reward. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh -huh. listen. Thank you so much, Arnola. Thank you, Latoya, for your comments. It's now 717, and we're gonna bring this to close. And thank you all for participating and helping Please. to make this Bible study. Uh, what it what it is and what it can be, and please share. Please tell other people. Don't just sit here and, and receive this these revelations. Get the Bible study, send you the Bible study notes, and you put them, print them off, and put them in your file. The purpose for me emailing them to you is so that you can email them to other people. You got to email. You know how to copy and paste. Go ahead and create your little uh, mailing list. And every week, every Tuesday. You mail the note when I send them out. You mail the notes to your family and friends, and then you invite them to come. And please don't take the notes and try to explain it, because sometimes we're going to fall short and get it twisted. Right? And that's what happens. You're trying to remember what, what was said and get it twisted up. Then they're going to look, but Bishop Paul's wrong. It wasn't Bishop Paul was wrong. It was I misunderstood, or I put my own look. You know, we put a look. We like to put spices on the meat right it's the meat got flavor but we want to put a little spice sometimes we put spices on the bible study and take it out of context all right pastor pastor wood pastor wood you here so we're going to turn it over to you i'm here thank you so much can you you got anything to add close remarks or just give us a benediction whatever what's up in your heart <laughs> i i just I'm, I'm so glad to have you explain it so well for us to understand <coughs> what, what reconciliation really means for us mm -hmm. and we have a better appreciation for it. To God yes. be the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Yes, yes. Let us pray. Yes. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. 
God, we thank you for our life, our health, and our strength. We thank you, God, because you allowed us to come together on this Tuesday evening to learn more about our relationship to you. God, we thank you because you have given to your manservant the revelation that he was to share with us, your people, so that, God, we will know more and more of how we should behave and how we should relate to you. God, we ask right now that you bless all those that are part of this Bible study. Help us all to leave here, not as hearers only, but as doers also. We ask God that you continue to bless us, continue to let us be ambassadors, and let us see the fruit of our labor. We ask all these blessings and the power and authority afforded us through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Pastor Wood. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you. Have, have, a, have a great week. Have a great week. Good night, everybody. Have a great week. 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 Have